After traveling for two weeks in Japan, we finally made it to one of my favorite prefectures and a must visit if it's your first time in Japan, Kyoto. Getting to Kyoto from Osaka is really easy. You can take the Shinkansen and get there within 15 minutes. We were really hungry by the time we got to Kyoto Station, so we head down to the underground shopping mall. The dining hall is located on the north side of the mall and has a variety of cheap dining options. We ended up eating at a restaurant known for its thick, handmade Sanuki udon noodles. so long time no check-in we got into kyoto maybe like two hours ago i am very excited because i love kyoto and if you haven't seen my other travel vlog series i will leave a link to the playlist down in the description box below because basically what i'm doing is i'm filming my entire month-long trip here in japan and the reason why i'm here is a couple of things one i was born here i'm japanese american but i was born in fukuoka adopted by japanese american parents and grew up in los angeles but I don't know. My first time visiting Japan was four years ago or something, but the minute I was here, I just felt an intense like pull to this country and just everything because, you know, even though I grew up in America, obviously the Japanese culture has a huge influence on me, especially as a Japanese American. Yeah, just being here, I'm just here to learn, educate myself about things, explore, try all the food and I wanted to take you guys along with me. Second of all, I'm here because my dad's actually moving to Japan. I just feel like this is a good time for me and him to actually have some time to hang out before he officially moves here and I go back to the US. So that's basically why I'm here. In this video, you're gonna see a bunch of things that we do in Kyoto. For those of you who don't know, Kyoto is actually really near Osaka, not a Kobe. In my last video, we were actually in Osaka, but kind of not really in Osaka because you can actually do a bunch of day trips in all the different prefectures in this area. So we ended up doing a bunch of day trips based out of Osaka. If you are traveling to Japan, Typically what people do is they either stay in Osaka and Kyoto and then do the day trips. So you can get a bunch of prefectures and places to visit done just by staying in this one location. Cause Tokyo is quite a ways away and so is Fukuoka. You'll have to hop on a JR or a Shinkansen to get over there. Kyoto is one of my favorite places because you do get more of the like old historical Japanese buildings today. We're just kind of having a chill day. We ended up eating at Kyoto Station and then head over to the hotel area. I think we're just gonna rest for a little bit and then find dinner, I guess. Today is definitely gonna be one of those just like travel days, rest, because starting tomorrow, we're gonna be moving around a lot. It was a colder December day when we arrived in Kyoto. So we looked for a place to get hot pot in the neighboring areas. We ended up walking to the nearby Riverside District and got Matsunabe hot pot with sweet potato sticks as an appetizer. And welcome to our first full day in Kyoto. Today we're heading to Fushimi Inari, which is where all those red Tori gates are. And I am very much looking forward to this because I haven't been in years and I love that location. So I'm excited to take you guys. First, we're gonna grab some breakfast. So let's head on out. Today, we are taking the Keihan line to Fushimi Inari. This line is convenient for Kyoto sightseeing because it links some of the most popular destinations. I recommend getting an IC card if you use public transportation in Japan because all you have to do is tap your card and it automatically subtracts the ticket price when you tap out at your destination. The street leading towards Fushimi Inari is filled with many shops and restaurants. Fushimi Inari is a bit of a workout, which you'll soon see, so we decided to grab a bite before heading up to the shrines. 
there are food stalls with various street food options closer to the shrine, but we wanted a quiet place to sit down and eat. Plus, coffee was very much needed. We discovered a small cafe run by two women that had siphoned coffee and toast. Honey jam. The Fushimi Inari Shrine is one of Kyoto's oldest and most historic landmarks. It is famous for its thousands of torii gates that line a network of trails towards Mount Inari. The torii gates along the trail are donations by individuals and companies in the hopes of receiving good luck and fortune from the god of rice, Inari. You can find the donator's name and the date of the donation inscribed on the back of the tori. You'll also notice many fox statues across the shrine grounds. Foxes are thought to be the messengers of God, similar to the deer of Nara Park in Nara. Some of the stone foxes even have keys in their mouths. These are the keys to the rice granaries which they protect. The hike to the summit of the mountain and back takes about two to three hours. However, visitors are free to walk as far as they wish before turning back. A popular place to stop and turn around is about 30 to 45 minutes up the trail, where you will reach an intersection with a nice view over Kyoto. There are also a few restaurants along the way which offer locally themed dishes such as inari sushi and kitsune udon. It is quite a workout walking up and down the trails, so definitely make sure to wear comfortable shoes and clothing layers. We worked up quite the appetite, so stopped for a quick snack at a restaurant near the shrine entrance. Now we're off to our next stop of the day, which is Kodaiji Temple. In my opinion, you should try to stay in Kyoto at least three days if you can. The most popular destinations are all over and it takes time to visit each of them. That being said, I would not recommend doing what we did on this day. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to go to another temple after Fushimi Inari, but here we are. Kodaiji Temple is located up the hill from Gion and is known for its special night illuminations that run in the spring, summer, and autumn. Kodaiji is a serene temple with a small bamboo forest, historical buildings, and a relaxing place to stop for tea. I was exhausted after today's itinerary, so did not film much more of the day. Again, I would not recommend doing anything active after Fushimi Inari, but I 100% recommend adding both destinations to your Kyoto itinerary. The next day was a work day for me. After a full day of sightseeing, I was on the hunt for a good coffee shop to post up in and get some work done. It was hard to find somewhere to get breakfast in the morning, 
but we found a place called Smart Coffee to start the day off right. So right now we are trying to find a cafe to work from. The first place we went to at Ace Hotel is actually full. So right now we're walking to a blue bottle that we saw that had a lot of seating. And yes, it's a blue bottle. We have that in the States, but this one just looks really pretty and I just need a space to work, so. Our first stop ended up being at a blue bottle that we had seen on our walk to dinner a couple of nights ago. Blue bottles are everywhere in LA, but we decided to stop here because it had lots of open tables. So we got some sort of orange pound cake, drip coffee, and a New Orleans iced coffee. This is our view. One downside is that this place doesn't have outlets, so we'll probably only be here for a short bit and then we'll move on to the next place. I must admit, I did a poor job planning today's work day. I definitely recommend doing research online, either by reading blog posts or watching YouTube videos to get a list of cafes with outlets and good seating areas. We went to a couple of Starbucks locations, but they were either completely full or the seats available did not have outlets. Thankfully, we found a Tully's located at the bottom of a shopping mall that had lots of seats available and outlets. I learned a lot about working remotely during this trip and definitely did a better job finding cafes to work from when we got to Tokyo, which I'll show you in a later video. For dinner, we decided to treat ourselves to a nice steak dinner in the area near our hotel. So today we are heading to Orashiyama, heading on the train now. The next day we visited one of my favorite areas in Kyoto, Orashiyama. Arashiyama is one of the most popular Kyoto tourist destinations in the spring and fall. It's a serene area with bamboo forests, temples, monkey parks, and more. Look, we just got to Arashiyama and it is so cold, but so beautiful here. And not as crowded as I expected it to be. But yeah, look at this water though. <laughs> That's where we came from over there. And then the place I want to eat is straight ahead. I really wanted to eat at a cafe by the river, but it was closed the day we went. I'm sad because the place we wanted to eat is closed today, tomorrow, and the next day. So we're gonna pivot and find another place closer to where we walked from. Rashiyama has really good soba, so I think that's what we're gonna look for when we head back. Instead, we ended up at a restaurant near the water where we got hot soba, which was perfect. The weather today was windy and pretty chilly. After we ate, I stopped to get a warm taiyaki in a shop on one of the main roads, mainly to keep my hands warm as we walked through the area. One of the biggest draws to Arashiyama is the amazing bamboo forest. I personally like the bamboo forest at Kodaiji better because it's not as crowded. However, you can somewhat beat the crowds by visiting in the morning. My dad taught me that one of the best ways to see Japan know what real estate is available, and get to know the area, is to explore off the beaten path. After seeing the main tourist area, 
we decided to take a local bus to a neighboring temple so that we could walk back down through the Saga Torimoto Preserve Street. The street is lined with historical houses and buildings preserved in the style of the Meiji period, with many of the traditional buildings now serving as shops and restaurants. The street was quiet and a stark difference from where we were previously. It was a really peaceful walk and I enjoyed taking in my surroundings and supporting the local businesses in the area. All right, so we stopped by this cafe. It was really cute. There's only us and one other guy there who looked like a regular. And now we are continuing our walk down. It's still very cold, so I feel like I've been keeping myself warm by just eating all the things. Before heading back to our hotel, we made one last stop to a cafe tucked away off the main road. Kyoto is a must visit, especially if it's your first time in Japan. I love how it has the ability to transport you back in time and is seeping with rich Japanese history and culture. We have one more stop on our trip before heading to Tokyo, and it's another prefecture known for its rich culture, beauty, and well-preserved historical architecture, Kanazawa. 